No sé si...
following an ancient tradition which goes back to the very beginnings of the church in Rome. Christians celebrate the mystery of Christmas in the heart of the night. They recall the silence which enveloped all things when God's word came down from heaven, became men and a radiant light shone around the shepherds as they listened with joy to the news of the Savior's birth. On this holy night, in communion with the Holy Father, Pope Francis, we too are gathered to celebrate the mystery of the Lord's Nativity, the mystery of the light that shines in the darkness, the Word made flesh, the bread come down from heaven in faith. We join our fellow Christians throughout the world for the celebration of this great event of our salvation. Before the celebration of Midnight Mass, we are invited to meditate peer prayerfully on the prophecies that announce the promised Messiah, the prayers that invoke his coming, and the cosmic silence that surrounded his birth. At the beginning of the Mass, before we echo the song of the angels on that holy night, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth, the Lord's birth in the fullness of time will be solemnly proclaimed in the words of the ancient proclamation of the birth of Christ. This majestic text presents Christ, the Redeemer of mankind, as the center of the cosmos and of all history. This Holy Mass will be presided by His Excellency Monsignor Salvatore Pinacchio, Apostolic Nuncio and Director of the Diplomatic Academy of the Holy See Vatican, together with Monsignor Mauro Lali, our, post, our Pope's representative in Cyprus, Father Bruno Variano OFM, Latin Patriarchal Vicar for Cyprus, His Excellency Selim Sifer, Maronite Archbishop of Cyprus, together with all concelebrants. We welcome all excellencies, ambassadors, and the members of diplomatic corps accredited in Cyprus and all parishioners. In this Holy Mass, we pray for the intentions for the soul of Richard Cheblakian, Ricardo and Teresita Alejandre, Euphrosina Crescencio Jr., Crescencio Sr. Nugget, Onisimo and Mary, Henry Bacoto, Mariano Durano, Epifania Bodadilla, Marcelino. And Thanksgiving Mass for Olivia, Mar Maricel Mancao, Viol Tiluni, Tilino, and family. Let us now stand up and sing together the entrance hymn. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior there. Oh, lay the world in sin and error pine till he appeared and the soul. Christ 
Christ was born on a So let the light of stars so brightly gleaming Here come to wise men from Orient land The King of Kings laid us in lonely manger and all our trust born to be our friends for our years all in the angel voices was born all night even all night all night In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, for oh, my dear, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have already seen in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. And and Lord our God. And and Lord our God. And and Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, every living God, as we see how the nativity of your Son, according to the flesh, draws near, we pray that to us, your unworthy servants, mercy may flow from your word, who chose to become flesh of the Virgin Mary and establish among us his dwelling. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Today, the 25th of December, are known ages from the time when God created the heavens and the earth, and then found man and woman in his own image. Several thousand years after the flood, when God made the rainbow shine forth as a sign of the covenant. Twenty-one centuries from the time of Abraham and Sarah, thirteen centuries after Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt, eleven hundred years from the time of Ruth and the Judges, 1,000 years from the announcing of David as king, in the 65th week according to the prophecy of Daniel, in the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace, Jesus Christ, Eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to sanctify the world by His most merciful coming, being conceived by the Holy Spirit. And nine months having passed since His conception, was born in Bethlehem of Judea, of the Virgin Mary. Today is the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the flesh. <clears throat> Let us pray. Come quickly, we pray, Lord Jesus, and do not delay that those who trust in your compassion may find solace and uh, relief in your coming. We live and reign with you, God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you have made manifest your love 
when our need for a savior was great, you sent your son to be born of the Virgin Mary. To our lives, he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. Lord, bless all who look upon the, this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up our thoughts to him, who in God with us and the Savior of all, and who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Gloria in excelsis Deo. most sacred night, radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant we pray that we have known the mysteries of his light on earth, may we also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the only God, the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. God's sign is simplicity. God's sign is the baby. As we gather in prayer and song, let us open our hearts to the message of peace and goodwill. Let us extend our hands in kindness and compassion, just as Christ taught us through his life and teachings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light, and those who live in the land of the deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as men rejoice at harvest time. As men are happy, when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that was weighing on him, the bar across his shoulder, 
the rod of his oppressor. These you break on the day of Midian. For all the footgear of battle, every cloak rolled in blood is burned and consumed by fire. For this, for there is a, son, a child born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid on his shoulders, and this is the name they give him, Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Why this is dominion in a peace that has no end, for the throne of David and for his royal power, which he establishes and makes secure in justice and integrity. From this time onward and forever, the jealous love of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Today a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Today a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Oh, sing to the Lord, bless His name. Today the Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Proclaim His hope day by day. Tell among the nations His glory and His wonders. Among all the people, today a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Let the heavens rejoice, on the earth be glad. Let the sea and all within His thunder praise. Let the land and all His bear rejoice. All the trees of the wood shout for joy at the presence of the Lord, for He comes, He comes to all the earth. Today the Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. With justice He will rule the world. He will judge the peoples with His truth. Today the Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Today the Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. God's grace has been revealed, and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race, and taught us that what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God and all our worldly ambitions. We must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world. While we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Christ Jesus, He sacrificed Himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so that it could be His very own and would have no ambition to accept 
except to do good. The word of the Lord. of great joy. Today, a Savior has been born to us, Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. This census, the first, took place while Cornelius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and traveled up to Judea to the town of David called Bethlehem, since he was of the David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for, for, room for them at the inn. In the countryside close by, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be terrified. Listen, I bring you good news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly with the angel there was a great throng of the heavenly host, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to men who enjoy his favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.
my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, just uh, we have um, heard from the book Isaiah, the people that walked in the darkness have seen a great, a great light on those who live in a land of a deep shadow, a light has shone. I bring you news of great joy. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This liturgy, this sacred mass during this night, it's filled with joy, of hope. The darkness is destroyed by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior. The long and the prepared lineage of David, the root of yes, yes, seems to finish in a failure, in a manger filled with the straw. The smallness of our existence oppresses our hearts till the point that sometimes we feel we do not have hope anymore. The night seems to become darker and darker for those who hear the news of the light that is coming. They wait for the light of the day, but they do not see it coming. And they hear others talk about the light. Therefore, their night become longer and longer. And yet, here we are, in front of a child, placed in a manger, on the straw, and we are sure that this child hopes. He hopes for us, even when our hope seems to fade away, and we think we can be safe in our own secure certainties depending on our own capabilities, convinced that we do not need to believe, convinced that we do not need to hope, convinced that we do not need to love, when we do not even feel the impeding desperation. Yes, right then, he hopes for us. The child Jesus has come. As we were not asked whether we wanted to exist, in the same way we were not asked whether we want to be redeemed and liberated. And yet we are so, precisely through this weak child. Do we really accept our existence? Do we really accept our life? The fact that we exist is not enough to show that we have accepted life as it is and that as it will be in the unforeseen future. The stage of tonight's great mystery is the crib. The space is small, and so it remains, just like in our life. And yet God is able to compress his infinity, infinity in the smallness of this child. He was rich, made poor for us to enrich us every day with his real presence to the Eucharist to the word of God. We would not even hope to come out from the narrowness of our existence if God himself had not come on earth through this child. And through this child, we understand that when the human being desires the infinite, in this moment God comes and the human being comes out from his narrowness. We 
who are present here. We stand before the throne which welcomes the child Jesus. We are unable to move our heads away from this child, the God who became a man for our salvation, for the salvation of each one of us. And therefore, we have the right and the duty of hope. Christ is born during the night, and this night is the image of our own existence. Christmas has happened on that night. So let us remember that our life, if, even if the night is long, like the suffering and the destruction of peoples do ongoing wars, our life, even if the night is long, is always guided by the star of Christmas. Therefore, our existence is not night, is not darkness. For us Christians, the night of our existence is never night, but it is always like this night, a holy night. Christmas has come about in this night of our existence. It is the holy night. Amen. We stand for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, Father of God, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, to God from true God. God is not made, consubstantial to be to the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess and baptism for our forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the day and the life of the Lord. On this holy night, we have listened with joy and wonder to God's good news. With renewed faith and hope, we bring before God our needs and those of all the world. Let our response be, Lord Jesus, let the light of your love shine in our hearts. Lord Jesus, let the light of your love shine in our hearts. 
Bill Francis, our Pope, with love this Christmas, may he announce the Savior's birth in a way that all the nations of the world can hear and understand. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, May those in authority allow the good news of Jesus Christ to be preached in its fullness. May Christian faith inspire goodness throughout our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, may the light of your love shine in your heart. May we be comforted by the gift of God's only Son. May we be inspired to love God with all our hearts, and to seek His will with faith and courage, we pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, for the elderly, one those who suffer from serious illnesses, for those who are handicapped, physically or emotionally, and for those who are grieving, that love will be communicated to them in a way that reaches down into their loneliness, bringing light and hope to their hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, let the light of your love shine on our hearts. We remember those who live in the Holy Land. May Christians remain strong in their faith and bear witness to the growth of that gospel in a way that will encourage all who are on the side of truth and testifying to the grace of God, which offers new life to all who repent, we pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, Jesus let the light of your love shine on us. Mighty God and the Prince of Peace, our hearts are filled with the joy and the confidence as we make our prayer to you on this holy night. For you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. The story of Christmas is one that resonates deeply within us. The story of a humble birth in a stable, witnessed by shepherds and heralded by angels. In the midst of God's simplicity, let us bring our offerings to the Lord.
praying, brothers and sisters. Pray, brothers and sisters, that uh, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the oblation this day, today feast, be pleasing to you, o Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the world made the flesh, a new light of your glory has shone now upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him a God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with the angels and archangels, with the thrones and the dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fund of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this quiz, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly in this passion, he took bread and gave it thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was handed, he took the chalice and once more given thanks 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and the minister to you. Humbly we pray that the partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Pier Battista, our Patriarch, and the Archbishop Salvatore, who preside this Christmas liturgy, and the Archbishop Salim Maronite Church, and all the clergy. Remember also our brother and sister who have heard us speak in the hope of the re resurrection and all who have death in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now we thank God for the gift of his Son among us. We sing together our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await uh, the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
looking out on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the, the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am the Lord, and But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, our Lord, our God, that we who are um, gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer Nativity may, through an honorable way of life, become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated for announcements. Please, extra patience, little bit. It's time to sleep now. But, <laughs> but we have some announcements. First, thanks, thanks to His Excellency Monsignor Salvatore Penacchio. Apostolic Nuncio and Director of Diplomatic Academy of the Holy See Vatican. Thank you for celebrating Mass for us. And Monsignor Mauro Lali, of course, from the Apostolic Nunciator in Cyprus. Thank you also for being with us. And we have also the Delegate of Custos of the Holy Land, Father Zacchaeus Dulniok. We thank also His Excellency Salem Sfair, Maronet Archbishop of Cyprus. Thank you very much for celebrating the Holy Mass with us, together with all concelebrants. And we also thank we say thanks to all excellencies, ambassadors, and the members of Diplomatic Corps who are participating in this Holy Mass with us. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Special thanks to Indian community who prepared the crib this year for us. Uh, we have beautiful crib there. To all who clean up the church and prepare the flowers, thank you very much. We don't see their faces, but they work for us preparing this church. To our liturgical servants, uh, altar servants, choir and music together with Maro, thank you very much to prepare the slide for us. After this Holy Mass, we have simple reception in the uh, St. Francis Hall. Uh, so we are all invited there to greet each other Merry Christmas. Our Christmas celebration is not finished now. We still have octave of the Christmas. So don't forget this. Sometimes people forget. After 25 December, finished. No. We have St. Stephen Martyr, we have St. John the Evangelist, we have the Holy Innocence, we have the Holy Family, we have the Mary, Mother of God. These are all important celebrations we must not forget. So, on behalf of all priests, we say Merry Christmas and Early Happy New Year to you all. Thank you. Also, just uh, also be patient, just one minute. No, don't worry, don't worry, no, no, really one minute. Just a few days ago, I met the Pope Francis in Rome, uh, and I was telling him I was coming here. And then uh, I sent his special blessing for this beautiful community. I think here we are all present, because when I heard the Burmese, Mingalabar, I <laughs> when I heard the uh, Tagalog, Salamat, <laughs> and I heard all this Indian, hey, Namaskar, <laughs> because I was traveling for 44 years all around the world. And today, all the world is here, together, to adore our Lord, Jesus Christ, like the Magi who came from East, from every part of the world.
For me, it was a great joy when uh, Monsignor uh, Mauro, he was my assistant in uh, India for three years. He was patient with me and he invited me to come because now he's the head of his mission here you know, of the Apostolic Institute. With great pleasure, I came here to join you for this uh, special festivity. Uh, for me, it's a great joy to see this beautiful commune. You prepared, everyone prepared this commune. Thank you, the Franciscan community, and also to the vicar of the patriarch, Father Bruno, and all the present here, from also from the Catholic, uh, from, uh, uh, from Maronite Church, and of course also from the diplomatic corps. And now, with great joy, I will invoke upon you the blessing on behalf of Pope Francis. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven the darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illuminated this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of eyes and illumine your hearts with the light of a virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who will that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angels, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by in the incarnation brought together the earthly and the heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and the favor, and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.